Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today to share with you a fun mug rug tutorial. I still remember the first time I heard the term mug rug. I was reading a blog and had never heard that term before, but the blog writer had shared a little picture with a cute little coffee cup and a little mat that it was sitting on, and I remember thinking, what a cute idea. Sometimes you don't need a placemat or a tablecloth. You just need something to set your cup down on or maybe a cup and a small plate for some treats. And so I had never heard of that until I saw it on that blog post, but it, it is a great idea. Sometimes you really just don't need a bigger place setting to set something down on. So I'm going to share with you a fun little tutorial today for a quilted mug rug and you can make it in no time at all and they are perfect for giving for gifts or for making them for yourself for different places around your home. When I thought about the design I wanted for my mug rug this was the first idea that came to mind because it's so simple but yet so fun, and you can use a lot of different fabrics for variety. This was a favorite little pattern that my grandmother actually used to do. She made us lots of placemats using this pattern, and so of course I think it's fitting that I make my first mug rug with this same little design. I'm gonna give you some other ideas as well as after I share with you how to make this, because there are so many variations that you can take on this. But let's get started and I'll show you how fast and fun it is to make a quilted mug rug. Okay, when I made my mug rug, I actually had some little pieces left over from another project, but I'm gonna show you what to do to make them just the way I did. Mine were made, you can see that they have these little zigzag edges. Mine were made from honey bun strips, which are one and a half inches by the 42 inches st strips. And they usually come in a little uh, roll like this with all of the different fabrics in a collection. But I also cut my own honey bun strips and I keep them in a bin. And so you can do that too. Whenever you have a project that you're finished with that you think you want to keep, just cut up your fabrics into strips and keep them in a box so that you can pull from your little strip collection and make these blocks. Now, each of these rectangles are one and a half inches by three and a half inches, but it's easier if you do as few at a time. So what I would recommend is picking a combination that you like. And don't even really worry about how long your strips are. But make a strip set and after it's all sewn, then you can cut your three and a half inch squares from the sewn pieces. It just makes it go a lot more quickly and accurately. Sometimes if you cut these right at three and a half inches, it might get distorted a little in your sewing. So it's a lot easier just to make a few. And, and if you're only making one mug rug, then I might suggest cutting these strips at four inches and then after they're sewn together, you can trim your square to measure three and a half inches by three and a half inches. So for one mug rug, then you'll need six three and a half inches by three and a half inch strip piece squares. And also to save even more time, if you wanted, each of these could just be a solid square. You could just do a th six different three and a half inch squares. But I am going to have a little printable that you can download with some of these different ideas that I have for this block. On the other hand, too, you could just do one and a half inch by six and a half inch strips, and you would need nine of them. So they would all be going vertically. And so 
you would just sew those strips together. There's there's so many different combinations. But again, I really do like this kind of combination. It gives you plenty of room for variation in your fabrics and it looks super cute. So after you've got either six squares or six strip piece squares, just start laying them out. And what I did was I alternated every other one and I also kind of made sure that my reds were kind of balanced. Red up here, there, there, there. So that all the reds aren't on one side of your project. And you'll see when you start laying them out that sometimes you have to turn things around. I didn't want those two oranges to hit each other. So, but now I have the same print. But then so anyway you'll just have to kind of see where you want to go and then also the the dark grays in this collection are kind of like the reds i feel like they need to be a little bit separated to balance each other out but come up with a layout that you want and then sew them together into two rows of three i've got another one already sewn together and at this point you're ready to quilt it I layered mine with a backing fabric and a batting and you can see that I left about an inch and a quarter all the way around. And if you look closely right here, I did this really kind of widened zigzag stitch on my machine. I actually have the numbers for a Janome where you, the numbers that you set the dials to get this stitch if you're interested so I can I actually think I will maybe put that in the, either the description or on the PDF that I have to go along with this but it's just kind of a a super wide zigzag that looks really cute so I I did that simple quilting and then you're going to take a straight ruler after you've quilted and just trim all of the edges to be completely square now I did use binding. I also went to my leftovers bin for my binding. I, when I have leftover binding from quilts, I just kind of roll them up like this and keep them in a bin. And so I was able to find some of this coordinating fabric to bind it. Now, another thing that I will tell you that I did do was I did trim my binding down to two inches for this. For quilts, I usually use two and a quarter inch wide binding. But I trimmed this down. I just, I didn't want it to be extra bulky. I just wanted a thin little border on the front and on the back. And so while it was a little bit tighter to work with in the corners, I feel like the two inch binding, the smaller the project, that you will really be happy with using a smaller binding for something like this. And that's really all there is to it. The possibilities are many and probably endless but this is just such a cute little project and with the holidays coming up you could make it in holiday fabrics or winter toned fabrics to use for the next few months and of course this is kind of a bright and cheery spring and summer one that i've done but i think i need to make some more using more winter seasonal fabrics Okay, I hope you enjoyed this fun little mug rug tutorial. I sure had a lot of fun making it and have plans to make many more. I did just want to show you a couple things before I close though. This is a smaller one. I still haven't bound it yet, but if you look, it's just kind of the right size for just the mug. So I guess it falls more into the coaster category. But when I was talking earlier about doing just a strip paste version, this will kind of give you an idea of what that would look like. You would just cut these strips taller. And I will have the information for both of these in just the coaster size and the mug rug size in, on the PDF so that you can have all the strip cutting measurements. But I did want to show you also, this is, this is kind of bigger than a mug rug, but also smaller than a placemat. I just did one grandmother's flower garden block on a background with a cute little border and it's kind of actually just makes a nice little arrangement also for a mug and a plate of cookies or this would be super cute 
in holiday fabrics as well. So just a few ideas. I hope you enjoy making some mug rugs soon. And I would love it if you enjoyed this video, if you'd hit the like button and share it with a friend. And thanks so much for stopping by.